What is up guys, welcome back to NS Swift Tips. In this episode, we will be having a look at one interesting way in which you can use targets and preprocessor macros in Xcode. The macros and preprocessor directives are generally used for low level things and you should be careful when you are using them because, in my opinion, if you use them all over the place in your code, the readability may get worse. And if that's the case, you should consider implementing your logic in a different way. Making a duplicate targets and altering them slightly is a great way in which you can have a different versions of, the, of your app with slight modifications. Let's jump to Xcode where I can show you all of that. Here we are on my computer. Let's open Xcode and start a new project there. Let it be a single iOS uh, app, single view. Yep, so I'll call it macros tests. Core data, no need for it. Yeah, leave everything because it is on your computer. So I'll save it in documents like this. And so we have the empty template uh, working just like we have an empty template from Xcode for a single view application. I forgot to launch my simulator, so I'll do it now um, so that it, it could launch. But uh, so what you can do with these macros and what kind of use cases they have. Let's start with this. Macros, pre, they're called preprocessor macros, give instructions to the compiler how it should read and handle a specific file. You can, uh, they are like low level things. Uh, and not that common in application development, but you can still use them here. Xcode allows you to. So, uh, common preprocessor directive is, is this one. If it has else and it ends with and if, like this. You can skip the else part too. And here you can give a macro. Let's say uh, a macro that you have defined like this. What will happen now if I put this uh, let's say in view did world you can get it here and put it inside this method I can call the command macro is defined I can, I can just print it out and in the case of else macro is not defined like this did you see how the highlighter in Xcode highlights this line and it's not able to highlight this line that is because macros affect the highlighter in Xcode too so basically what happens is for the compiler and highlighter Xcode like the whole thing this line does not exist because this macro is not defined if it was the other way around if you have if i have typed in here something that is defined then this will not be highlighted and it won't exist at all imagine like this line is not part of your file at all that's how uh, this preprocessor macro works so how you define define this uh, macro and where you can go to your project settings your target and in build settings search for other swift compiler flags this thing if you expand it you can give the flags here or you can type them even here 
and these are flux to the compiler and so how you define a macro with a parameter to the compiler is by saying dash d and giving the name of your macro so in our case is this like that if we go back here you see now that it's switched macro is defined this is no longer defined so if we run it it will execute this command but this will be skipped this is how macros operate and you can make uh, like more advanced things with them let's say you can have uh, here defined struct uh, box and here you can have class box and now you can say uh, if macro else and if and so what will happen now is it, it can't like really make it n nice like the auto indentation gets it wrong but what will happen is if we have a macro defined hmm, what is wrong with this uh, it expects oh so I can't do that like yeah yeah but I can do it in, in another way let's say I can have a class box or struct box like this and I can remove that part here and this will get me the same result see so if we have a macro defined our box will be struct otherwise it will be class I haven't used this before but I wanted to show you how it works so it basically runs either these lines or these lines it depends on whether that's added and what you can do to further improve this uh, behavior and make it usable is you can come here and clone your target duplicate and let's say I, I will name it uh, I don't know how let's say yeah duplicate but you can name it like in a different way it really doesn't matter and you see that Xcode automatically generated a scheme for it so you can come here it's with the old name you can delete this scheme and make out Xcode auto create scheme again and see how it finds your target and creates a new scheme for it and so now you have two schemes and both of them are with targets that will produce a single view application for iOS targets in general uh, can produce a lot of things like from macOS apps tvOS, TVOS applications dynamic framework static frameworks all kinds of things but because we have duplicated the iOS app target this one now will create the same thing but what we can do is here from it we can remove this uh, part with the macros so uh, one of the targets have macros defined and the others does not have watch what happens now here so the the syntax highlighter is highlighting the case where macro is defined but if i switch the target you will see that because macros is no longer defined this code will now get executed this does not exist there doing this uh, allows you to uh, make slight modifications of your app let's say you wanna in your app you're tracking whether a person has visited this screen or not and in this view controller you have a function maybe it's a private func uh, track track 
presence or I don't know send data to analytics like this and you want to have uh, like a version of the app that is tracked and another that is not tracked and so I can say like this track if I come here and make if track call this function and so now in my duplicate target track is not defined so I will never gonna call send data to analytics but if I switch to the first target send to analytics will get called and it will track that the user had gone to this screen uh, you can extend it even more you can make even this whole function disappear and if like this and what this means is now when track is not defined even this this whole function will not gonna get compiled it will just disappear so it won't take space from your binary when it's ready and if we build it what happens with this simulator no it's still not here but yeah even even like this I can just build it should be fine so see how only this bit gets highlighted now only this will be executed and this function does not even exist but if we switch it the function is here it will be called and if I print something here If I run the app now on this target, it will print out these things. Right, so what else you can do with different targets and macros? With targets uh, on its own, like duplicate targets, you can have, let's say, uh, different files containing the same class or structure or data in general like imagine options from your app that could differ and in the one target it uh, it will load one of the options and in the other it will load the other options so uh, let's say I'll have an options file options file like this I'll put it in the two targets for now so options I'll have a struct here called options uh, another struct that will act as a category which I say network uh, network like this and let's have a static property there called address uh, and in one case it will be uh, what it could be let's say it will be address one or like this and we'll, you'll see how I can with the help of targets I can switch this value this is what I'll show you now so you have options network and the field address if we call it here network 
network address this is where this is the the value at which it will point uh, however I can make a make this file like this options debug let's say and I can uh, duplicate this file I can make a new one and call it options for production like this if I copy this thing from one place to another I can switch this address to something else let's say like this the address will point somewhere else now see how Xcode complains it says uh, in invalid red declaration of options and that is correct and that is because both of these files are part of the two targets they are they will get compiled in the two targets and we don't want that we want them to be mutually exclusive so what we can do is in our prod target let's say the duplicate target will be our production target we can come to this prod file and say be part of this target but don't be a part of the other one and the same goes to here if we go to options debug we want it to be a part of the first target and not a part from the second one and by doing this we can guarantee that only one definition will be available at a time and now if we are here and we are in the macro test macros test target this thing will have a value of we have this value google.bg and if we switch the target this should lead us to the other value youtube.com so see how you can make like small modifications these are really useful if you have let's say if you're implementing a manager for connecting to a api endpoints and you want to have different environments let's say one environment for uh, development and one environment for production uh, maybe you have you want to have a specific environment for your testers this is how you can do it and you can have separate targets and choose on which one you want uh, you want your uh, URLs to point at that's one use case and the first things here that I have shown you with this uh, if uh, directives you can sm make small modifications let's say here you can choose that you want to have a view with a background color that is green because uh, you want a green version of the app let's say and in the other scenario you want it to be blue this is totally possible it's fine you can have a let's say a function update appearance and have it there or when it comes to colors maybe the best way to do it is to have a separate file up colors let's say and have an extension there of UI color like this and let's have static variable uh, up color one which is of kind UI color and now you can return here uh, I don't know what let's say let's return return gray you can have the sub cover uh, one defined for a second time and use the if and else directive like this and now in one of our targets we'll have it like it will be gray 
but here I can make it light blue let's say and when I switch yeah but this does not exist let's make it just blue for now and if we switch only this uh, the up cover one will be this value and if we go to this location the up cover will be blue it won't be gray it will be blue that's a use case and that's um, that's a relatively simple thing to do with macros and you know you should keep your macros uh, like simple because sometimes they can make your code really hard for reading and they can introduce a lot of code smells here because they're kind of a low level thing so don't use them too much but for configurations like this they're fine uh, at least this is how I'm seeing it I have used this in some of my apps it's a cool trick to be able to switch things like quickly with your targets and yeah that's it also there's one more thing that you should know every time when xcode builds a project for a debug let's say a, a debug version of the app like this like a regular build there's a special macro defined by uh, by xcode it's called debug so this is available when you're building debug versions of your app however if you're making a re a releases this will not uh, be available and what this allows you to do is to let's say print debug info only if you're making a debug build and when you're about to make a release build for an app store the print statements will be gone why this is important and why it's cool uh, it's cool because first you're not making additional system calls which slows your app I know that there are a lot of optimizations and a lot of like clever things that the compiler does however as a programmers as developers we should try our best to make our code looks uh, faster and to be more like easy to be understood by the operating system so this may this thing will make a system call that will print to a place that the user will not be able to see or uh, in fact it this could be seen if your device is jailbroken and you hook to this process only then you'll be able to see them but you don't want this to happen because then uh, who will do this uh, someone that doesn't have uh, your code and wants to look at what the app does internally so let's say a hacker wants to uh, penetrate your app you're leaving them clues if you do this but uh, if you print only when your debug macro is defined that means that if someone has a release build these print statements will not even get called so nothing will be printed and that's the cool part about them this thing here complains now because I'm printing in, in the middle of nowhere if I have a function like this then it's fine let's say you can call this function print walk uh, and then pass a string here like this you can pass it here uh, and here you go you have a function that will print your walks only if you, you're making a debug build and not a release build and that's really cool so have a look at it play around uh, maybe you come up with another use cases for these macros but basically that's it there is nothing complex to them don't overuse them because sometimes you may uh, get your code like really hard to read if you are using them over the place try to keep them in one file or 
uh, organized let's say up covers and have some things with the up covers or debug uh, versions you know just keep it uh, really tight and organized and then you should be good to go thanks for watching guys i hope you learned something new today that you may put to use in your work if you like this video you should consider subscribing because i'll be posting here for you guys videos like this every week see you in the next video bye bye